Welcome back everybody to my um, wet hair colored pencil drawing. This is part four. And in this drawing so far, I've only used these four pencils. I've got a Karen Dash Luminance white. I have my Faber-Castell Polychromos black. Uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos Caput Mortem Violet. And then I've used my colorless blender, which is a, it's a Prismacolor colorless bl blender. You can use any colorless blender. <clears throat> I know Karen Dash makes one. I just, I like the Prismacolor one. It's pretty cool. So um, in the last video, we worked on his belly and his feet. And I laid in the base layer of his fur and now I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more detail, a little bit more definition. As you can tell, he's in my um, reference photo, he's shaking. He's shaking all the, the water off of him. I'm taking him out of his background. I gave him some feet, placing him on a surface. And when, I, when we're done, this, the water droplets will fly off of him. And I'm thinking about even having a couple here on the surface just to make it a fun type picture. I had to ref I had to research what typical bunny feet would look like. I don't know that these are exactly right, but they're close. They're very close. Um, and in speaking of that, at the end of the last video, I said I was going to just double check my bunny feet reference, and I did. They're pretty close. <clears throat> the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. They kind of have these knobby little toes. And I've made some definition in here with a Caput Mortem, but I'm gonna come back in and kind of knob them out just a little bit. And make them, you know, just a little crooked. And then since he's a hair and he's wet, I'm going to just lightly come back in with my Caput Mortem and define a few clumps of fur. See how we did this here in his paw? Just a few clumps of fur. And while we're at that, at this, I noticed when I was looking at this in between videos, I needed this to be a little bit darker in here because that paw is over the other paw. So I'm gonna darken it up with Caput Mortem freshly sharpened my pencils before this video. So I'm working with a nice pointy tip, which helps when you're doing detail. Okay. So now that looks like it's behind it just a little bit more. And then I can come back in either with an eraser. This is my my Tombow Mono Zero eraser. And I can try to get maybe a little fur on top of that. But let me pick that up. It's quite a bit of pigment down. <clears throat> and then to give that a layer, come back in really lightly with a Caput Mortem, very lightly underneath to show how that little clump of fur is laying over the lower little clump of fur. Gives it a little bit more definition. That fur underneath has a little bit of a shadow under there. You can just use a very light hand to get that definition that you need. A little bit more of a shadow here at the top part of his paw. As that fur comes down in a different layer. So many layers of fur. Okay, 
that helps. That helps a lot. I can also come back <clears throat> with a little bit of the white, the Caran d'Ache white, and just here and there, do a little piece of white, extra little white that catches the light. I typically will do that more towards the end. That's too bright, I don't want that so bright. So I'm gonna go back over it with a caput morta. There we go. <clears throat> okay, that helps. That helps. Now, so we've already got that initial layer of fur underneath and it's kind of swishy. And this was just all done with a very, very light clumping layer of the caput mortem. Going over it with the colorless blender and then going back over it in clumps and random directions with the white. And then I went over it again with a colorless blender. <clears throat> So now what I wanna do is I wanna add, there's a whole lot more dark here on this side underneath the water droplets. So I'm gonna lay that in and I'm gonna to try to be very deliberate about those fur clumps, those dark, dark fur clumps over there. And I'm looking at my reference only to know like where the dark should be, but I'm not getting super crazy about making sure my clumps are exactly like the clumps in the reference. You just have to get them going in the right direction. So we're just clumping it around. We're just being clumpy. See how I'm picking out different sections. They're all kind of going in this one direction because he's shaking and turning in that direction. And then there's some darker stuff up here, right next to where the white is gonna start coming out. Since I can't really see this area really well in the photo, I'm just gonna look at this and say, okay, what should that look like? What does that fur do at the top of that foot? Does it part and give us a shadow in here? Does it clump up because he's kind of sitting forward? Whatever it does, I think there's a shadow here, I think because it's meeting the foot. So I think there's gonna be some shadow there. And it's gotta be kind of random, you know? <clears throat> so now you can kind of see how the fur is laying. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my white and just try to lay in a few highlights. I broke my tip. That happens on this, on this Caran d'Ache. No biggie. Where would the light be hitting? It's going to be hitting maybe where it's wet. Maybe just lightly. It's 
some areas. I'm going to use the side of my pencil. Let's come back into his foot, get some more shadows around where his toes are. I'm going to like lay in the shadows by doing a little backstroke like that. Not sure where that fuzziness would be. But in between these toes, they're going to be shadowy. And they're going to be darker on this one side than they would be on the other. Get the lights hitting here. And I gotta think that he's gonna be having a little bit of fur situations up here. A little stray fur. There we go. Just kind of hanging there. And then to show that it's hanging over the edge and turning that corner, I'm gonna add a little shadow under there. See that? And that shows that there's a little bit of fur hanging over. It's kind of fun. Because there's going to be a little bit more light on that side, I can put a couple of little pieces of fur lit up there. But overall, that's going to be a little shadowy under there. So we're assuming it's kind of hanging over. There. Might revisit that a little bit, but I just want to get a little bit more definition on those toes. Just fur clumps. He's a clumpy kind of guy. All right. <clears throat> now that's giving us a little bit more direction. Going back with my Caput Mortem in some of the darker areas and just Highlighting some clumps that are darker, where they're buried deeper in the fur. And that will automatically give us some dimension. And then, so I get that down. I just want to give him some flyaways down here. I just, I love little flyaways in the fur. Aren't they fun? A little bit more of that fur just pillowing over his foot like that. There we go. Now we're going to take some black. This is our polychromos black. <clears throat> Can come in a little closer. And you can see I'm going to just, in the deepest, darkest shadows, I'm going to add a little bit of black here and there. We know the side looked darker in our photo. So we're going to add some black in there. And shadow up under where that fur curls over his foot. It's going to be dark. And we can actually really go in these toes, these knobby toes, and hit it just every once in a while with a little bit of a black knobule. <clears throat> Still fighting this cold. Not fun. Okay. He's looking like his fur is a little too long here, so I'm gonna end, I'm gonna make this, this fur a little shorter. And doing that, you just take wherever there's a lot of that white right there, I just made that now shorter fur. 
I'll in the natural curve of that fur. Doesn't need to be that long. I mean, yeah, he's a wild hare. I don't think he needs to have hippie long fur, right? That doesn't make sense. Okay. <clears throat> that looks a little shorter. Go back in with our black. Hit those deep areas with the black. Maybe a little too black right there. Maybe not. I don't know. Let me look. Come back in with my kneaded eraser and see if I can pull some of that out. Yeah. And I can blend it. <laughs> my blender broke. It'll still work. What I'm doing is I'm going back over like the thick white lines that I made with the Caran d'Ache white and I'm going over it with the, my um, Caput Mortem, my sharp edge and I'm actually separating out so now it looks each of those look like a separate piece of fur. <clears throat> okay cool. Now what's left is what we'll do on top of this is we will put, I'm thinking, I'm hoping, we are hoping, we're crossing our fingers, that gel pen will show up really well on top of this to look like the white. And those are, that's just a little too dark. Let's give it, separate that out a little bit down there on his feet. There, that looks more more natural. <laughs> Just want his little fur to curl up there a little bit. Okay. Then on this side, that foot just a little bit more shadow so I could put mortem on the bottom and this fur and then little toes it's kind of going back in space there so go. And a little bit more shadow with the black. There we go. Once again, I'm just going to put some clumps in there on his toes. in 
in some shadow where that fur is on top of his foot. So there would be a little shadow underneath. <clears throat> Cutting into the fur a little bit to give it some definition from where it's hitting the table. I can go back in with white if I think it looks too uniform, break it up a little bit. Okay. Now for this tummy part, I just want to add a little bit more definition of where the white fur is. So I'm going to go back in with my white, make a few more clumps. I see a row of you know clumps here, a little bit here. Do you see those? Maybe a clump here. And just make those a little bit more pronounced. It's kind of be like another top layer. And I'm pushing pretty hard now. <clears throat> and you can just see how this, this Caran d'Ache is just extraordinary to use for burnishing, for laying color on top of places that have already been burnished. Look how I can just layer that color over there and it just looks like a, a whole other layer of white on top. Get too carried away. You don't need to. You really don't. Pressing so hard, I'm getting a little bit of color bits coming off. So I'm going to brush those away. And now I'm trying not to um, overemphasize his little his little private area here. So uh, I'm afraid to put any more color in that. I could take a little bit of the kaput mortem and very lightly glaze in like where that shadow would be inside the fur. See that? Very lightly. You don't have to hardly do any pressure at all. You can do that same thing up here to show where a layer of the white is in shadow. Same thing maybe over here. See how just the hint of that makes sense? Always going in the direction of the fur. Okay? And it just brings, I'm so, you guys, I am just doing this so lightly. The, the further down you hold your pencil at the end, the lighter you'll go. If you have a hard time with a light hand with your pencil, just hold it. Don't hold it here. Hold it back here. And that will force you to go lighter. But look at that, guys. It is just the faintest hint. And that's all you need. That is all you need. Do not overwork it. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> I am going to go back up here though in these shadow areas and I'm going to hit it with the kaput mortem a slightly lighter or uh, uh, darker because there will be some darker shadowy patches in here. And do it at random. Still not going very dark. Very light. I'm gonna burn it, uh, glaze over here with some shadow. A little bit more shadow. <clears throat> and that needs, it's too red right there. 
needs a little bit of the black. Tone it down. Because it is a shadow after all. Just not too much. And I can go in here and just do a single line of black in there. And then feather it down as a shadow. Like that. Look at that. That works. That works. Okay. <clears throat> a little bit more white out of here. This side, I'm just actually glazing it with white just lightly. Because it's all just a little too dark. According to the reference. It's a lot lighter. And I'm using the side of my pencil. I'm trying to use the side of my pencil and not hit my foam stand. Just very lightly, making that all white. Okay, cool. Cool. it again with a few strokes of the darker Caput Mortem. And this in here I'm not happy about. I need to define what that fur is doing right there. Give it a definite direction. There we go. And then we're going to hit that with some black. So that's deep in there. That shadow is deep. We're going to hit it with some black. Just like that. Deep in there. See that dimension that gives that? <clears throat> and don't think that's dark enough in there. I want that to be darker. Then I can come on top of it with a little bit of white. And that will make more sense. Separate that clump out a little bit with some Caput Mortem. A little bit of black at the very deepest part. <clears throat> there. All right. We are getting close, guys. We are getting close. That was a little too much black right there, so I'm going to go over it with the luminance and then I can blend it. Still might be too much. Go back in with my eraser. Cleaning off all the black that was on it before. Have I mentioned that I I love my battery eraser? <laughs> it is awesome. <clears throat> okay. Now, just do could put more and we're not gonna do black in there. And there we go, that makes sense. Okay, so now what I can do, the final thing, because this is getting to be about 30 minutes, I'm gonna go back with my colorless blender and just hit this in places. 
I'm really happy with the way it is, though. It doesn't need much. It does not need much at all. Soften down anything that maybe looks too harsh. some definition right there. Pull that back out. Okay, guys, we are close. We are really close. Just going to hit this with some white in places. at it overall and just see if there's anything <clears throat> that I can tell right now that needs a little bit more white up here and there. Add a little bit of white up here. Just looking for places in my reference that where I can see the light is kind of playing. And I want to make sure I can get those same type of effects in my finished piece. Cool. I just love drawing. I hope you do too. I hope you explore some little projects on your own. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, <clears throat> continue just to kind of look at it, see where I need to maybe add a couple of more white whites and dark darks. Like he's got some whiskers here we can pull out that are just cute and fun. Let me just fly those out really quickly. Probably come back and do a couple of them in black as well. And then we're going to do what's left. What do we have left? We have water left. We're going to add the water. It's going to be fun. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with it. All right, see you guys soon.